So I want to speak a word of God today. Speaking with Pastor JJ, he tells me that you guys have been talking a whole lot about prayer. And, you know, not knowing that you guys were in this season, um, I p- prepared a message that kind of ties into prayer. And I believe that that's the way God likes to kind of tether things and make things happen. And um, so I, I invite you to open your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 11. And we're going to be considering verses 5 through 10. So whether you turn on your Bible or you turn to the pages in your Bible or you watch on the screen, um, if you have it, just say, I got it. No, you can say louder than that. I say, I got it. All right. If you hear me for the first time, I don't mind if you holler back as long as you don't throw anything at me. I think we'll be just fine. Um, In fact, I I, I preach better when I hear people say, hmm, that's good. Go ahead, pastor. Say that again. I may say it again if you say, say it again. Uh, Yeah, I'll say it again. And so um, as we go deeper, I'm kind of like a cook. Once the the food is prepared, I like to watch people eat. And so if you like it, just, 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 mm -hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that's good right there. And um, what's going to happen, I'm just going to preach even better. You're pulling it out of me, okay? So. We're going to look at a passage that's familiar. Many of us, for those that are in, been in church, you've heard of the Lord's Prayer. If you're new to church, Jesus taught his disciples how, how to pray. He, they asked, and then he said, this is how you pray, and he taught them the Lord's Prayer. He said, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and he keeps on going from there. But when you look at what Dr. Luke, doc, Luke was a medical doctor. He's detailed in what he shares. He's the only gospel that goes in detail and shares this story and it's on the heels of learning how to pray and so he gives this story that we know as parables and he says this in verses 5 through 10 it says then teaching them more about prayer he used this story suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight somebody say midnight wanting to borrow three loaves of bread notice just three loaves of bread that's all he needs you say to him a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out from his bedroom, don't bother me, the door is locked for the night, my family and I are all in bed, I can't help you. But I tell you this, though he won't do it for friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need. Because of your shameless persistence, and so I tell you, Keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, find. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be open. Father God, we give you this time. We've been inspired by the worship. We've been inspired, Lord, by just being in your presence, but now, God, we are ready to receive your word. And Lord, we don't just want to be informed by it, we want to be transformed by your word. And therefore, God, I present every single person that's watching, every person that's in each room, and Lord, right now, that you uh, may invade those areas of their life that need change, and that we may leave better and feel better after this message. In the name of Jesus, amen and amen. If you love Jesus, give him a hand clap right here in this place. I, um, I served at a church uh, not too far from here that's, uh, you can see it right off the interstate. It's a pretty large building. And serving in that church, when I first started, they gave us a key fob. And they gave me a set of keys. And they said, this is the set of keys for the church. But the key fob is really all you need. And the key fob could get you into different places. And um, I would use the key fob to get into my office, to get into the different buildings. And uh, there came a time where I tried to get into certain rooms and I couldn't get in. The key fob, there was no key fob entrance to be able to use that. And I called our head of security and I said, George, I really need to get into this building. Can you come and open this door for me? He said, where you at, Pastor Manny? Because that's how he talks. He said, where you at, Pastor Manny? He's from Pine Hills. Where you at, Pastor Manny? And I said, I'm all the way on this side of the building. He said, I'll be right there, Pastor Manny. I'm on my way. And so he comes over. He says, before I open this door, let me see your set of keys. I said, all right. So I took on my set of keys and I showed it to him. He says, all right, let me show you something. You see this key right here? This is called a master key. This master key opens every door. 
I said, every door? He said, every door. I said, every door? Every door. He opens every door in this facility, every door in this place. And I said, I didn't know that. He said, well, now you know, and knowing is half the battle. It's G.I. Joe. Somebody got it. And so, so I say that because I believe that many times we don't even know the keys we have. I mean, even right now, literally, we have keys in our pocket that we don't, especially the men, we don't know what they do. We've got that small key we do, that we don't know if it's for a lock or if it's for the mailbox. <laughs> we got other keys that we still have never used because we get into the, through the garage of the house. And um, I believe in many ways that sometimes we are limiting our access to places because we have not used the right keys in order to get in. And one of those keys I'd like to say is the prayer key. I believe that prayer is the master key um, that will be able to open doors that you've been standing in front of for a long time. There's doors that you've been asking God to open that only open through prayer. There's doors that you've been asking God to, to, to make a way for you for, but they're not going to happen because they only open with the prayer key. It's the prayer key that will give you access into the next season and the next uh, part of your life that you need to really step in. And while you're frustrated because you can't get in, it really takes you taking some time to pray. It really takes you taking some time to pray. Now, doors come in all shapes and sizes. Doors come in all shapes and sizes. My favorite type of doors are um, doors that open automatically. Like, I, I, I love the fact that I don't have to touch a door that it just opens for me. Whether it's at the supermarket, whether it's at the airport when I'm traveling, I just like the fact that if I get close enough to it, uh, it, it because of my proximity, it opens in my favor. And I believe that there's doors in your life that God wants to open be, be just because you got close enough to him. There's doors of favor that only open through proximity. You know, you, you stand far enough, nothing happens. You get close enough, that door begins to open. And I believe that the closer you get to God, there's doors that will give you access to things you couldn't get before. Those are my favorite types of doors because they require proximity, closeness to God. The closer you get to God, the more doors open in your favor. Now there's other types of doors that these doors open easy. Either you push them or you, or you pull them, but they're not so heavy. They kind of open easy. It's kind of like when you go to the restroom at Target or something like that, and I'm going to the restroom, I don't like to touch any doors because I don't know what people did with their hands before they came out of the bathroom. So I like to use that little claw thing and I pull the door open. And with my foot, I could get the door open. Or if I'm getting out of the bathroom, I, the elbow action happens. I don't touch the door, just the elbow, because I don't know what people did with their hands. Those doors open easy. There's doors in our life that will open easy. It's simply, Lord, in the name of Jesus, I really need access. I need favor in my job. And boom, God does it. Those are easy doors. But I want to talk to you about some, some heavy doors in our life. You know these kind of doors, right? These are the doors that are met with adversity. These are the doors that we struggle with and sometimes give up on trying to get that door open and we walk away into another place or another season or another city or another play, job because it's been too hard. It's been too hard to persevere through the situation in life. And these heavy doors look like personal loss. You've lost something or you lost someone. They look like health issues that we deal with many times. They, they look like financial struggles that we can't get through. They look like adversity in family, struggles in family. And these are the things that many times, if we're not careful, we will park and live in the valleys of shadows in, uh, in life when God has called us to get through it. He says, although I walk through the valley of shadow and death, I will fear no evil. The key is to get through the valley of shadow and death, not to live in the valley of shadow and death. And I believe that many times because life gets hard, Life gets hard, friends. That many times we give up and we just say, well, it will never get better, so I might as well stay right here where I'm at. And I've come to tell you that while prayer is the key, hope, it's hope that gives us the confidence to push open those heavy doors in our life. Notice I say push 
those heavy doors in our life because it, 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 I grew up in Sunday school and there was something called push. And it's that we pray until something happens. I believe God wants us to push with hope. You see, hope gives us a confidence for the things we can't even see. Hope is the guarantee of things we can't even see. And so God wants to lift up your confidence with hope. Because at the end, hope opens the door. Praise God. It's been great to be with you today. That's my message. Have a great week. I could stop right there, but I, if I did, I'd leave you and not really go into the meat of the message that will give you the, the practical things you need to leave today. So I'd like to share a couple of ways that Jesus teaches us on how hope opens the door. As we read in the passage, we read uh, a couple of verses, verses five and six, and if you look at the passages, it shows us a situation. The man has a friend that showed up in the house and he doesn't have any food. It says like this, it says, suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight wanting to borrow three loaves of bread and you say to him, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit and I have nothing for him to eat. First thing that calls my attention is this guy was not prepared for friends that were coming and more importantly coming in the middle of the night. Now we've all been there where people decide that they want to come and visit us and that's the week that we didn't do grocery shopping. And so we have to find ways to make it work and, 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 and we, we kind of improvise and make things happen even if it's just, you know, the simplest of things. Growing up in New York City, my mom always had something called Enterman's Pound Cake. Mmm, I would like a slice of Enterman's Pound Cake right now. I, and, but here's the thing, the, the Edelman's pound cake wasn't for, for me and my brothers. The Edelman pound cake was backup just in case people came to the house. She didn't just have Edelman pound cake, she had export soda crackers. That wasn't for us either. She also had something, I didn't tell the other two service, services, she had a can of guava. And that wasn't for us. That many times was in the pantry for several months. <laughs> and I was back up just in case somebody came to visit. You see, I, I grew up in church. Now, you may say I grew up in church too. No, I literally grew up in church. I grew up in the third floor of the church Brooklyn, uh, building in Brooklyn, New York. And so after church midweek, after church on Sundays, after party was at the pastor's house. And so my parents always were ready for visitors. This guy was not ready. This guy was not ready for visitors, and so he immediately goes to his friend's house because in, in Middle East culture, it is, it is an obligation, a moral obligation to have hospitality. And so he goes to his friend's house to ask for bread, and, and, and so he does that, and, and he goes in the middle of the night. He goes at midnight to go ask for bread. And, and this calls my attention because the guy had a sense of urgency. The guy realized, I can either let my friend stay and then I can just tell him, hey bro, in the morning we'll get some, um, some Egg McMuffins and I'll take care of you, but tonight I just can't do anything. He could have done that, but back then they didn't travel on Ubers, they didn't travel in cars, they didn't even travel, travel on camels, they walked everywhere. And so his friend is coming from a long journey, he's probably hungry, he's probably thirsty, he has no bread for him. And again, hospitality is big. He has nothing to give him, but he has a friend that he can ask. See, I believe that God wants to give us a sense of urgency. We got to build a sense of urgency for the needs of others. We got to be able to wake up that thing that says, I can't just stay here and expect somebody else to do it. I got to do something about it. With everything that's happening in our city, with everything that's happening in the world, it's easy for us to take the inclination to say, well, somebody's got to do something about that. We watch the news, we watch it on social media. Man, that's pretty sad. I hope, I hope somebody does something about that. And when we come to church and we see the needs that are needed for the church, and we're like, well, I pray somebody could do something about that. And God is saying, I need you to take a sense of urgency because it's going to take all of us to make it happen. Or we just say this, well, Jesus needs to come already because this world is going cray-cray. 
And Jesus is saying, I'm not coming until my bride mobilizes and helps the hurting people in the world. It takes a sense of urgency. You see, Leonardo da Vinci, the one that painted the great and most famous painting in the world, Mona Lisa, once said this. He said, I have been impressed with the urgency of doing. Knowing is not enough, we must apply. Being willing is not enough, we must do. And doing requires you and I stepping out of our comfort zone to reach and meet the needs of people. Look at Romans chapter 12, verses 11 through 13 says, and this is not me saying it, this is like the Bible. This is, look what it says. It says, never be lazy, but work hard and serve the Lord, listen to this, enthusiastically. That's a big word right there. Enthusiastically. Enthusiastically, enthusiasm. Enthusiasm comes from a root word in the Greek that is in theo, in God. To do it in God. Whether it's your job in the marketplace, whether it's serving at church, whether it's being a mom to your children or a father to your family, it's that we do it with enthusiasm, that we do it enthusiastically, and we do it in God. God through us towards others. That's what God is asking us to do. It's not that you have to do it, it's that you get to do it. It's a different mentality, it's that you get the opportunity to serve in different areas. It's that you get to be able to lead in different areas. It's when you do it enthusiastically. In 1962 is when we were sending, the, uh, the United States through NASA was sending a man to the moon. And in doing so, John F. Kennedy visited NASA only to be encountered by, with a janitor that was brooming the floor. And this man is brooming the floor, but he's doing it like, I mean, he got, he got, some, he got some umph to it. Like he's doing it and he's probably listening to some nice music in his headphones, if they had headphones, which I don't think they had headphones in 1962, but just imagine this with me. And, and, and he's, he has his own rhythm and he's enjoying what he's doing so much that it caught the president's eye, causing the president to ask him, um, what are you doing? What are you doing? And he said, well, Mr. President, I, I'm helping to put a man to the moon. Now think about that. He's brooming the floor before the astronaut gets on the ship to go up into space and land on the moon. But he considers him brooming the floor and cleaning up the, the floor a, 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 a part of helping to get a man to the moon. He considers what he's doing not a small job, but a big job because this is all going to be on the news and these floors got to be clean. If the astronaut's going to walk on these floors, I don't want it to be dusty. I don't want it to be ugly. I want to make sure it looks good because this is my job. I own this right here. Now, imagine this. He did it for an astronaut that was going up to space to land on the moon. You and I get to serve God and serve people so that they one day could get to heaven and spend eternity with God. May God give us a sense of urgency for people, a sense of urgency for the needs of others. The second thing that we notice is that he did it with shameless persistence. He had no shame. He was not embarrassed to wake up in the middle of the night and knock on the door. Look at verses 7 through 9 says, and suppose he calls out from his bedroom, don't bother me. Because, you know, he's knocking on the door. He's literally knocking on the door and he's, he's, he's there. First knock. And the, with the first knock, you know, if, if, if it's two people sleeping on the bed, a husband and a wife, it's like the wife always hears it first. Like she's like always half awake. And she's like, Babe, did you hear that? And he's like, huh? <laughs> now mind you, everybody's sleeping. The family's sleeping, the dog is sleeping, the goats are sleeping, the cows are sleeping, everybody's sleeping, everybody, everybody's sleeping. And he, babe, somebody's knocking on the door. Cause that, well, that's what we do, man. We don't speak without saying words. We're just mumbling things. I need some bread. At this point, he's looking at his, his Middle Eastern or his, 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 his that time's ring camera. 
Just imagine this with me. They didn't have ring cameras. But if they did, he's looking. And when he looks at his phone, because that's what we do, right? We don't even get up. We want to see who's at the door. So we look at our phone. Turn on the app. Ring camera. What do you want, bro? What do you want? Do you know what time it is? I know what time is it, but open the door. Open the door. I need three loaves of bread. Three. Just three. Just unlock it. I'll go in. Unlock it. Now, if you grew up like me, like if you ran out of sazon or, or, or salsa de tomate, my mom would send me, go downstairs, ask her, ask Marianita, she'll, she'll give it to you. She'll give you a can of tomato sauce. Just go, go do it. This is what's happening. She's, he's like, just three loaves, bro. I need, I need this. I got somebody that showed up at the house. And at this point with the knocking, the knocking is not stopping. Now the kids are crying, the dog is barking, the goats are back, and he's like, Jordan, shh, Jordan, because that's the name of the goat, okay? I just want to make that clear, that's the name of the goat. <laughs> he's knocking and knocking, he's not stopping, he's shamelessly knocking, shamelessly persisting that somebody opens the door and he won't stop until he gets it. I want you to realize this, because in asking, all of a sudden the door opens and the man says, get whatever you need. In opening the door, he only asked for three loaves of bread, but because he asked with persistence, God will give you more than what you asked for. You see, you've been wondering what kind of bread you're going to get. You've been asking God for wonder bread. I wonder if God's going to do it. I wonder if God's going to show himself through. I wonder if one day God's going to be there for me. I wonder if I'm going to get married one day. I wonder if this is all going to work with this job that I transferred to be a part of and it's not working out right. I wonder. No, no. God doesn't want you to wonder. He wants you to have the full thing and he wants to give you more than enough. He wants to give you Ephesians 3.12 bread. He's willing to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all you can ask or think. That means whatever you thought you deserve, he's like, I got something better. Whatever you thought you needed, he's like, if you wait a little bit more, I got something bigger. Whatever you were expecting in that man or in that woman, I got something nicer. This one got all his teeth. It's not about wonder anymore. It's about he will do it. And he will do more than what you need. Not three loaves of bread. I'm going to take as much as you need. But that only happened because of shameless persistence. I wonder what would happen if you and I dare to ask God for more. Not more so much for ourselves, but more for others. You see, if you look at what we read, the passage in front of it said, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. There comes a point in your life as a Christian where you can't only ask for you, you got to ask for others. Now, I understand there's people in this room, this is a new walk for you. You need to keep going to next steps. You need to get water baptized. That you are right now in the season of you need to get fed. But there's people in this room and those that are on East Campus and those that are online, you've been doing this for a while now. You're still asking God for bread and God is saying, no, 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 I need you to ask bread for others. It's not just about you anymore, it's about others. Others need to know who he is, but you can't get tired of asking God. He will do it if you keep being persistent. Mother Teresa said it this way. She said, don't think that love in order to be genuine has to be extravagant. What we need is to love without getting tired. What we need to do is love without getting tired. You know, we're right now in seasons where sometimes the love of many are growing cold. That's what the Bible says. The gospel says that there will come a day where the love of many would grow cold. And God is saying, don't get tired. 
Don't get tired of loving. Don't get tired of loving on that family member that just doesn't, they just won't come back. Don't get tired of loving on that person at your job, that coworker. Don't stop loving because the moment you love unconditionally, you're showing the love of Jesus. Jesus on the cross himself, he says, Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. That we may have a heart like him to not get tired of loving. I've come from very far. I've come from the Ozarks in Missouri, back home here to speak to a church that's going through growing pains. Growing pains. My, I remember when my oldest son had, was growing up. He was five or six years old, and, and we would put him down to sleep. We would pray over them. And, and, um, and before one night before we left, he said, Dad, my, my legs hurt. I was like, really? He said, yeah. And then the second night, Dad, my legs still hurt. That, and even at night, they, they, my legs hurt, and we took him to the doctor, and the doctor said, you know what this is? He's growing. He has growing pains. And in his growth, his bones are stretching faster than what he could even imagine. I mean, he's not even, he's, it's just happening, and in it happening, it's just natural. Here's what's happening right here. You guys are growing. And in growing, God wants to prepare your minds and hearts for more bread. More bread, more space for more bread. More space for more bread. You know why? Because here's what's happening. They're coming. And you say, who's coming? People are coming. People are coming from all over the nation and all over the world. And they're going to need a church like this church right here. Yeah. So I want to tell you they're coming. So, 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 so we need to knock on the door for people that are struggling with anxiety and depression because they're coming. We need to knock on the door for people that are struggling with identity because they're coming. We need to knock on the door for people that are struggling with a broken marriage because they're coming. We got to knock on the door for our prodigal sons and prodigal daughters because they're coming. We got to knock on the door for our coworkers. They're coming. We got to knock on the door for children that are dying of hunger because they're coming. We got to knock on the door for women that are treated as objects because they're coming. We got to knock on the door for people that are persecuted through war because they're coming. They are on the way and so are we. We are on the way. Journey Church is on the way to knock on the door for people that need the hope of Jesus. If you believe that, give the Lord a hand clap in this place. Tell your neighbor, hope opens the door. If we look at verse 10, look what it says. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. Everyone who knocks on the door, it will be open. Notice that the parable is talking about others. It's a posture to look at the needs of others. That we should ask, that we should seek, that we should knock. And that we should be persistent in the process. How do we do that? How do, how do we seek and find? How do we knock and the doors will be open? Well, one of them is by praying. But I want to tell you about prayer. There's prayer that you do for yourself and then there's prayer that you do for others. That's called intercessory prayer. After this, and even right now, there's football going on and some of you are going to go and watch some football. In watching football, there's a, something that happens where the QB, the quarterback, will throw the ball intended for someone, but the other team will many times intercept that ball and make it theirs. Well, this word intercessory prayer comes from that word interception. It's that you put yourself in the place of the person and you pray as if you were the one going through the situation. God wants to show us to not only pray for ourselves, but knock on the door for others. Because there's others that need what you and I need. Now, I got to pause in all of this to say that in my preparation for this message, I feel like someone or certain people need to hear what I'm about to say. You see, many of you that are here have lost a whole lot in this season. There's things that just don't make sense. And in the loss of it, you've also lost your confidence in what God can do in your life. It almost feels like God's punishing you because he's been quiet. And you've prayed and you haven't heard anything back. You're still moving forward, but there's something missing because you feel like things were taken away. 
and, and, and things being taken away, you feel like you've lost some of your identity because your identity wasn't some of the things that were taken away. But I believe that God has brought you here today with a message. And more importantly, a specific word. You see, Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 3 says this. Call unto me, and I will answer you and show you a great and mighty things. Listen to this. Fenced in and hidden things which you do not know. You do not distinguish, and you do not recognize or have the knowledge to understand. You see, there's things that you can't see in the natural that God has hidden in the supernatural. And while you feel like you're living in not enough, God's saying, if you simply call out to me, I will bring out exactly what you need. You see, let me break it down this way. There's a pair of sneakers that you really want, but you got the intel that this store actually has them. They're not on display, but you know they have them. Somebody at the store told you they got them in the back. And so you show up at the sneaker store and you're like, I'm looking for the fives. You know which ones, right? We don't got those. We don't got those. They're not on display. No, no, no. They're in the back. Somebody told me they came in last night. Can I get them? You see, nobody can see it outside, but they've hidden. There's things, if you call out for it, that word call in Hebrew is kara, which is to cry out loudly to God. You know, when my kids were little and they needed something, sometimes they would cry it out loud because they were like, I really need this now. And sometimes God is asking us, will you cry out to me? You see, knocking is a sign of calling out to God. And God wants you to call out to him so that then he can show you hidden things that you can't see. He wants to give it to you in revelation. You see, you feel isolated, but it's in your isolation where you are receive preparation for your revelation. You see, it was, it was John the Revelator, the one that writes the book of Revelation. He was put apart into an island called Patmos. And as he was put out to this island, he was put apart because he was a threat to so many people. But it's in your isolation where you receive preparation for God's revelation. And there's people here that you feel isolated, you feel set apart, you feel like everybody's come against you and you feel alone in your journey. I've come to tell you from the Ozarks all the way back to Orlando, it's a setup. God is setting you up for a great plan that's ahead for you. He's about to give you a revelation for what's ahead for this new season in your life. I close with this at Convoy of Hope. We help with disasters, we feed children, we empower women. And in Central America, we have um, an empowerment program for women. This one in particular was in a certain city where there was a brothel. A brothel is a place where women are trafficked. In particular, for the sake of her safety and her name, let's just call her Maria. Maria was trafficked from the age of 12. That's all she knew, to be trafficked and used as an object for the pleasure of others. At this brothel, there was women that were there into their 60s and 70s and 80s, still in this, in this bound place where they were used. Well, one day Maria began to attend our women's empowerment program. She came out of that. And coming out of that, she found that she didn't have to survive, but that she could thrive. She was able to start her own business. Year to day, over 22,000 women are part of this program. She learned the tr some trades and she learned to start her own business, no longer needed to sell her body for survival. But then she went back to this place that the brothel is called La Linea, which in English is the line. It's the place where people would go to find pleasure. She, she starts her business and she goes back to La Linea. But this time not to go back to the old lifestyle that was holding her back. She goes back to be a part of a new church plant that was called La Puerta. And La Puerta simply means the door. It was a church called The Door where she would now serve in this church to help women come out of this lifestyle and help women and be empowered to start their own businesses. See, what I'm trying to tell you is this. Hope opened the door for her and now she's opening the door for other women. See, that's what you and I can do. 
when we are willing to knock on the door for others, it makes a way for them so that one day they can knock on the door for others. That's how hope opens the door. So as I close today, I simply want to ask you this. You fall on one of three spectrums of today's message. You're either here as a visitor, a friend. You may not be familiar with what just happened here through worship and the Word, but God knows why you're here. And you've been walking a journey looking, looking for all the wrong things in all the wrong places. But God brought you here because there's bread for you. There's bread for you right here in the house of God. And here that you're welcome. With open arms, you're welcome to be received because there's bread in the house of God right here at Journey Church. That's number one. Number two, you've been knocking for a long time and you haven't received an answer yet. And God says, I need you to have shameless persistence because if you keep on knocking, the door's going to be open. But you're tired and God wants to strengthen you with hope so that you can have the confidence to move forward. Or number three, you're in the house and you've been sleeping. And God is saying, I need you to wake up and help people. You're in the house and you've been sleeping and God's saying, it's your turn to come down and give people bread. God wants to wake you up out of your slumber. God wants to wake you up out of the situation you're in to help the needs of others. And you may say, well, Pastor Manny, how do I do that? You either give of your time, you either give of your treasures, or you give of your talents. But we can all do something for the kingdom of God to see people changed by the power of Jesus. I believe that's the message for today. And I believe that God is speaking to people in these three areas. And as I pray for you today, as I close out in prayer, Whatever area you feel that God is speaking to you, maybe it's for salvation, you want to make a decision to follow Jesus today, that's the prayer that you need to make today. Whether you're here and you're, you need strength to keep moving forward, that's the prayer you need to make today. Or you're in the house and God is waking you up, that's the prayer that we have for you today. Let us pray. Father God, I thank you. In this house, there's all kinds of people from all kinds of walks of life watching online and watching at East Campus. Lord, there's people that have showed up not knowing what you were going to say, but Lord, you're speaking specifically to a certain area. And you want to help them in this area. So God, right now, I want to speak to those that are coming. Those that are coming from afar and they're tired in their journey. Lord, you're here to remind them that you are the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father if it's not through you. So today, as they make a decision to follow you and walk with you, Lord, that they may find comfort and peace in knowing that in coming into your arms, they find everything that they need and the bread of life, which is you, that will comfort them and give them exactly what they need to satisfy the hunger of their lives. Lord, if there's people here right now that are tired and weary of the journey of knocking on the doors for themselves and knocking on the doors for others, and they're just ready to give up, Lord, let them not get tired in loving. Let them not get tired in doing. Because, Lord, if they are willing to wait, they will reap a great harvest if they do not give up. And lastly, God, for those that are in slumber, and for whatever reason, they've kind of fallen back and are just allowing others to do what they should be doing. You're waking up that sense of urgency within them to do more and to go ahead and respond to the need of others the way you've asked them to do so. We pray this and we believe this in the name of Jesus. And if God has spoken into your heart and you believe it, give the Lord a hand clap in this place right now. Hey, we're JJ and Liz Vasquez, and we wanted to say thank you so much for watching and engaging in today's content. Maybe today you made the decision to follow Jesus. We want to celebrate the incredible decision that you made. All you have to do is text JOURNEY to 55498. We would love to walk this journey out alongside you. Hey, don't let the journey stop there. We love for you to do one of three things. Either subscribe, share, or support. If this ministry has blessed you at all. Subscribe so you don't miss out on any new videos. Share it with a friend. You never know what the people closest to you are going through or you can choose to partner with us through generosity, which helps bring these videos to people like you. Thank you so much for connecting with us. Be blessed.